Okay, well, we will make it work. Um, yeah, so my name is uh, Václav Petráš. I go by Vašek as well. Uh, I am a research software engineer at North Carolina State University. And uh, we are doing a uh, lot of different things, but the things I'm involved with are uh, creating geospatial models. And we do also work on contract basis uh, uh, support for grass GIS, open source development, uh, tangible landscape development, and more. And uh, I will be presenting a lot of things, but uh, and uh, a lot of things I was involved in uh, actually uh, executing that, but uh, uh, there was a lot of other people who were involved as well from the grass community. So, uh, Grass GIS uh, uh, consists of uh, 500 uh, command line tools with four more, 400 more in Grass Addons repository. And uh, what adds to the complexity is that there is uh, uh, more than 50 uh, dynamically linked compiled C and C++ libraries. Then we have uh, more than 10 uh, Python sub-packages. And we have uh, uh, four different uh, uh, interfaces, natively in GrassGS, a graphical user interface, command line interface, Python interface, and C. And uh, uh, we want all this to work uh, while uh, following our uh, goal of uh, keeping, uh, uh, keeping the code stable while having all the latest innovations in it. And uh, the goal of GrassGS in terms of processing is that there is just everything. So you don't have to install any additional uh, tools. Well, we have the add-ons, but it's uh, more the experimental versus stable distinction. Uh, and this follows uh, the mission of GrassGS project, which is bringing advanced geospatial technologies to the world. So we want all this to work. And uh, uh, that's a complex system. So. Uh, Marcus was talking earlier, earlier about our transition to GitHub and Git. And uh, related to the talk, the important thing was that uh, in 2018, uh, GitHub came with this uh, free uh, GitHub Actions continuous integration environment for open source projects. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, uh, continuous integration time available in the cloud uh, for free. So we can uh, take, make use of it. So uh, for uh, Python code, what we introduced are uh, formatting with uh, black software, uh, which uh, formats all your white space in Python. We are checking the code uh, with Flake 8. And some of the code is now uh, checked even with PyLint, which is, uh, which is checking your style. And uh, similarly for C and C++, uh, we are now running in the continuous integration uh, GCC. Uh, then uh, uh, CLang so far, people are only testing with it locally. In the past, we were using coverage scan. We, we, we may uh, get back to it as well. And a lot of warnings were fixed uh, for 8.0 and 8.2. Uh, but uh, the issue there is that uh, in the continuous integration, we still don't enforce the actual, uh, the actual strict checks. Uh, uh, but what we are doing is that we are running uh, the, or compiling the code with different uh, uh, C++ uh, versions uh, and C versions, uh, which is something which in the past was uh, even hard to, hard to get. So now we, we do that. And there is a couple more tools used in GrassGS now. Uh, there is uh, CodeQL, which is a GitHub uh, security tool that's applied for Python, C, and C++ code. We are running a superlinter tool, which checks a lot of different languages. What we are uh, using from it are JSON uh, checks and a couple more. And uh, there is a couple more we want. So uh, that's a great way how to contribute, is to enable one of these checks and make uh, the couple of files which are in that particular language are syntax compliant. 
And uh, we have spell checkers. Uh, some tools are in the utils directory, so if you download GraphGS, you can run some of these scripts in Python or Bash. There are some uh, continuous integration friendly tools as well as CSpell, uh, which uh, we would like to integrate. So uh, what happened between uh, 7.8 or 7 and 8.0 is that we applied uh, black formatting, uh, which means that uh, all uh, formatting errors from GrassGS disappeared. So that's the 25,000 errors we had in the code. Uh, then we also started to apply uh, our fixes related to Flake 8, so that's some uh, Python standard PEP 8 compliance issues and some other ones. So we reduced it uh, from 10,000 to 3,000, and the ones which are remaining are usually uh, issues which are not really serious, like uh, unused variables. And for GCC, uh, with uh, relatively strict settings, uh, minus uh, w all, minus w extra, which gives you a lot of different warnings for a lot of code. Uh, the reduction of there is not that significant. Uh, it's still just around 1,000, but uh, all the critical issues are fixed now. And uh, there is more things which are work in progress. Uh, specifically, we are working on PyLint. It is applied for some uh, files, but with a lot of, uh, lot of ignoring of uh, certain warnings. That's a much more challenging tool. If you try to apply it to your code and you haven't applied it before, it will certainly find some issues with your Python code. But I recommend it. Uh, it really helps me to write better Python code. I actually rarely get the code right as PyLint wants. But uh, when, I, when I actually comply with that, uh, my code is much better. And then the code QL, uh, we, uh, we have uh, quite a bit of issues uh, for C and C++ code. Uh, some of them are false positives, but sometimes in terms of security, uh, so they are not really security issues, but they sometimes show uh, some possible bug or some possible misbehavior or just some need for code cleanup. So in that sense, uh, they are uh, not for positive. For Python, CodeQL doesn't really show any issues for us, which is a little strange. So there are other tools like Bandit, uh, which uh, might be better, and we uh, need to try them. Uh, I will tell you more about uh, two examples of uh, linting tools. So linting uh, or code checking uh, also includes uh, uh, just formatting your code properly. In Python, now we have this almost a standard tool, Black, which uh, just formats your code in very one particular way, which is also a little bit different than what uh, many people were using before. Definitely for me it was different. But now it's that the one tool everyone is using, and it seems that it works really well. It's very easy to use. You just run Black. In, in command line, that would be Black space dot for using everything in the current directory and it just formats all your code, everything is done, you don't have to do anything more. And then in continuous integration, it's also very easy to use. Uh, and the important, tool, uh, important thing about it is that it's made for uh, uh, people using Git or other versioning systems, so the formatting is done in the way that changes in the code are actually creating minimal differences in between two versions of the code. So it's uh, formatting which is uh, developed with uh, the current ecosystem in mind. And current ecosystem here would mean we are all using Git or other versioning control systems. On the other side of the complexity spectrum uh, lies, for example, uh, Volgrind, which is a tool for C and C++ uh, checking. And it's, uh, by default, it checks uh, your memory usage. Uh, you actually have to run the program itself, so you have to compile it and then run it with real data. And then based on how the program behaves, it uh, checks all the memory usage and tells you, okay, this is, uh, here you are uh, losing some memory, you are losing control of it, here you are uh, using memory in a wrong way, and it will give you a report about it. Uh, so in GrassGS, when you want to run it, you actually have to run GrassGS and run that, run that tool. 
So uh, these things are hard, so what are some of the benefits? Well, one of the benefits is that you can uh, end the endless discussions, like here I'm uh, probably bubbling something about uh, code style or something, and everyone is just totally bored. So uh, uh, you, can, you don't have to have these discussions anymore because you are just using black, and that's just it. No, no discussion needed. Um, then uh, the other thing is that the uh, uh, checks are just uh, ensuring consistent quality. Uh, there are at least some consistent minimal quality. And uh, you see how happy are we when we have uh, high quality code. And uh, again, there is uh, no need for much discussion if the tool flags this as an issue, it says, okay, here is an issue, it's clear that you have to fix it. Uh, of course, there are exceptions, but exceptions are exceptions, not the rule. And then, uh, here are some checks looking at code. Uh, that's Jakim Czepicki and me, we are both checks. We are looking at uh, some code, and that's uh, uh, exactly what you want to happen in uh, the continuous integration, that the the checks are actually applied automatically in the continuous integration. And uh, the nice thing about the, uh, the, these automated checks is that they are checking all the code. Uh, while if you are writing tests, you are always kind of behind in your test coverage. You may be at 10%, you may be at 90%, but it's hard to be 100%. But, uh, and then might be, there might be some forgotten code which you even though didn't consider. But these checks, if they are applied just to the whole directory, it will check all these like site utility scripts which you forgot about. So that's exactly the experience I had. And then the nice thing is that uh, sometimes you think, oh, this is just an unrelated warning. But then when you ex examine that, you will figure out that there is actually a real issue. So for example, here, this is a real example which happened like months or two months ago in GrassGS. I had, uh, I had a warning for the line above, and it seemed like that the pilot is just complaining that I'm not using the latest, greatest f-string syntax. Uh, and that wouldn't be that much interesting. For new code, yeah, I would, I would try to fix the warning in the way how it is suggested. But here, it was different, because I was not supposed to take get the warning, because the warning was about a regular string formatting. But this is not a regular string. This is a string which will be translated by the translation system from English to other languages when GrassGS is running. So I was not supposed to even get this warning. And the thing is that the code was actually wrong. There were, the parentheses were uh, in the wrong way. So when I changed the parentheses, so that they are correct, uh, uh, the warning disappeared. And the thing is that the syntax was correct. The thing which didn't work was the translation itself. So this string wouldn't be, would not be translated uh, for the users, but as a developer or as uh, the linting tool just doesn't see that. But it saw some other related issue and that helped me to fix the real issue. Well, uh, we were introducing GrassGS into the, uh, the, uh, the linting tools into the GrassGS project, and one advice from that is start now. If you have a, a new project, uh, start right away. If you have an old project, don't wait. Uh, it was very hard to get started with GrassGS, uh, some of the code coming from 80, some from the 90, some from the 2000s, uh, but uh, we, we made it, we were able to, to actually do it. So you don't have to wait, just go ahead. And uh, then enforce the standards in continuous integration. It's nice to apply uh, black formatting to all your Python code, but uh, it's difficult to keep it. And if you don't run it locally, you will certainly go away from the, uh, from the formatting. So you should just, uh, just apply the code, uh, just, uh, have the checks in the continuous integrations. And there are recipes how to do it, so you can just, you can just use those. And uh, you should consider all the warnings in the continuous integration to be errors. Uh, and uh, that usually the tools have some settings for it, 
So you should tell the tool uh, that, no, don't just warn me, really fail, so that my continuous integration fails and I see that. And definitely, especially on the code sprint, avoid all the errors from spilled beer, because you don't want that in the laptop. And uh, some tips and tricks. Uh, well, uh, and if you are ignoring warning, and that's something you can do, you can ignore some warnings. Sometimes it's totally uh, uh, perfect. Sometimes it's some uh, temporary solution. If you do that, be very specific. Ignore only the specific warnings. Python tools are very good at uh, allowing you to do that. Uh, and uh, this uh, is really necessary for other people uh, uh, to see what you are ignoring and what you are not ignoring. Uh, so be transparent. We are here in a fishbowl room being very transparent. Um, and also minimize where the warning is ignored. So for example, for PyLint, you can put the ignore comment, like the ignore comment says ignore this line, uh, if it is on the same line as code. But if you put it uh, separately on a line, it will, ignore, it will ignore the warnings or the errors uh, everywhere starting from this line. So you don't want that. And then uh, try to ignore the specific warning or uh, refine the uh, general configuration. So for example, in this case, uh, we are getting an undefined variable uh, name because we don't have, the underscore is not defined. But it's a special function in GrassGS which is actually added as a built-in, so it, the correct way is not to ignore the undefined variable name, but define it or tell PyLint uh, that it is an additional built-in. Um, <laughs> um, uh, wait, what happened here? I have like tons of bonus slides. So when you get the presentation, um, when you get the presentation uh, uh, from the link, you can get through like 20 bonus slides. Uh, yeah, so you should, uh, you should explain why you are ignoring the warning. Uh, so that the developers then, the other developers don't have to think hard about what you actually meant. And uh, please, uh, now when you know how to, how to deal with uh, all the warnings and uh, checks, please contribute uh, some time to actually fix some of the code. Uh, there is a couple of ways, uh, and this is, uh, this is a great learning experience because that's usually a very localized issue, and you can just focus on a very small thing. Uh, or alternatively, you can do some non-coding task and that will free up some time for someone else to, to do it. And of course you can contribute some money, uh, so then we can do something like the student grant uh, for someone to actually uh, dive more into, into that. And uh, with that I will uh, uh, get any questions. Uh, you can get the slides online, uh, you can uh, contact me, uh, on my university address if you want to uh, get some consulting and otherwise you can follow me on Twitter. I will uh, try to get the URL for the slides there as well. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Vashik.